Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We actually have a bunch of stories for you today, an eight pack, and you know what? We're gonna do something a little different today. We're gonna, oh yeah, you see that? We got some timestamps for you guys. Now we actually have timestamps in a lot of our videos like this, uh, but this is a quick look if you guys wanna just like, you know, see a jump. Otherwise, the exact links to all the stuff are down in the description. Uh, so yeah, that's a lot of fun. By the way, we do have a giveaway going on right now for Prime Tober. We're giving away a Switch OLED bundle along with $100 to a charity of your choice to the winner. Uh, so yeah, all you got to do is be subscribed. Uh, we'll be setting up something uh, for you to uh, see how, who won. Uh, at a later time during this month. We're still working out some of the details on that. You, uh, the, the giveaway obviously includes the Switch OLED and you know the bundle items will be slowly revealed as we go throughout the month of November. That being said, hey, let's smash that like button. You guys crushed our like goal in the last video. We wanted to get 500 likes and it's over 800, 900 or so at this point. So for this video, let's be ambitious. Let's shoot for a thousand likes. If we can hit a thousand likes in the first 24 hours that this video is up, I will give away a $5. I know it's just something small but a $5 Nintendo Switch eShop gift card to one lucky person who comments down below. So you might want to comment as well. You don't have to, uh, but if we can get to a thousand likes, one of you guys will take one of those home. Uh, thank you guys so much for your support. And let's get into all of that juicy Nintendo news. So our first story is basically going to be summarizing the Nintendo Investor Q&A because they do talk about their next generation platform in this Q&A. They do talk about uh, their movies and some other things here. Uh, so we're going to go over all of this and we get this information from David Gibson. Uh, he is an analyst and investor and he happens to always be at every single one of Nintendo's investor meetings. So we tend to hear about all of Nintendo stuff early from him before Nintendo fully publishes their Q&A. Uh, and here's what he put out there. He said, question, Super Mario movie, are there other movies to come? Nintendo responds, and Miyamoto specifically, Super Mario film is pretty much done. Working on the last bit, have a very good feeling about it, but we are very careful to not betray customers and meet expectations and continue to work to polish the movie. Would like to roll out with other IPs for movies, etc. People would experience IP in a variety of ways, but going one by one, not say doing like several IPs at the same time. So the idea there is obviously, yeah, they're gonna do more than just Mario movies. We already have a rumor of a Donkey Kong movie and if the Super Mario movie is practically done, it would make sense that the ball is already rolling on the next Nintendo movie. Now you might go, if the movie's all the way already done, why the hell do we have to wait till December 21st of next year? That just happens to be the timing Nintendo wants. In case you guys didn't know, by the way, movies are often done quite early compared to when they actually release. It is interesting to see Nintendo confirm that the Mario movie is essentially done, but that does mean that production and work has probably already begun on the next Nintendo movie. They are going to be focusing on one movie at a time, so having this sort of production schedule also allows them to have good work put into their next movie, so when the Mario movie is out, they can actually announce their next project, uh, and by the time that movie comes out, they'll be able to announce their next project then. So Nintendo's trying to create a cycle here, uh, and I think it makes a lot of sense, and obviously Shigeru Miyamoto is heavily involved in this entire process as an overseer anyways, at Illumination. So this should be a lot of fun to see whatever the hell Nintendo does next, which we firmly believe at this point is Donkey Kong. But again, we also think a Donkey Kong game is coming that hasn't been announced. So until things are announced, who the hell knows what Nintendo's working on? Now, uh, the next question they put up there is uh, it says, will IP sales uh, be a contact point? or generate profits. And then Shintaro Furukawa said, we create characters in games and that creates affinity with users to try to not have overexposure. Priority is dedicated game device. Objective is for IP to drive interest in games. So yeah, not really too shocking there. Uh, the next question up here says, uh, what are they doing to address the semiconductor shortage? Because that is something Nintendo did say was causing them to not hit sales projections. And, th and it says, seeing a little bit of impact and the reviewing the designs to reduce the impact on the business. Basically, Nintendo say we can't really do anything about it. So here's a general answer that gives you no information because their hands are tied. The semiconductor shortage isn't Nintendo's fault. It's the fault of the pandemic. It is what it is. So Nintendo just kind of has to sit and wait like everybody else. Uh, moving on, it says, what can you say about the 20XX next gen device? Oh boy. 
juicy stuff here. They say nothing can be said. Good start, Nintendo. Um, Switch, I think, is in the middle phase of the cycle. So re-emphasizing, Switch is at the midpoint. They've been saying this now for a year. So was that at a midpoint a year ago? Is it at the midpoint now? I'm not sure Nintendo knows exactly because we don't know how long Switch's generation is going to be. But so Switch is in the middle phase of the cycle. Uh, we now have the OLED, and momentum continues with a wide variety of software lineup. On next gen, we are not saying right now. We are still going through internal discussions on the concept, the timing for release, and discussing everything. So they're in the concept stage, but also still discussing timing to release, which tells you they probably have a good idea of what the concept's going to be. And um, they might even have beta units or alpha units or something out there with certain developers and internally at Nintendo, but they just aren't really sure when this thing's gonna come out. They wanna make sure the timing makes sense. And I would argue it should come out before Switch loses all its momentum, because Nintendo always lets the momentum go and that never helps them out with their next platform. I'd like to see them do a more Sony oriented approach where you end the generation really strong, which helps kick off the next one, even if there's a bit of a slower start, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, yeah, let's move on to our next story. So, uh, uh, just a little note today, I'm sure you guys are aware, but if you're not, the Animal Crossing DLC has come out today. Uh, I have yet to partake in it. In fact, I have yet to partake in the 2.0 update, which, fun fact about that 2.0 update, they actually released it two full days before they were supposed to, and they did it really without any fanfare. They didn't just go out there and be like, oh yeah, by the way, everyone, we're, we're going to be releasing this today. They just dropped it, which I thought was actually really good, considering the amount of content in that 2.0 update and the amount of content in the DLC, giving some Animal Crossing fans a chance to space some of that out is great now for me that's not the case so whenever i jump into animal crossing at some point this weekend um i might be a little overwhelmed with all the new stuff but that's all right the fact there is new stuff is already exciting in that of itself so this next story is a fun one nintendo is actually one title away from being the system that has the most 10 plus million sellers in history that's right nintendo is tied right now with the xbox 360 for the most 10 plus million selling games in the history of video game consoles and handhelds we're gonna set pc aside of course because that's a bit of a different case there so uh yeah it has 11 10 plus million sellers xbox 360 had 11. if you wonder about the wii the wii had nine and the ds that had 150 plus million in sales only had seven and the playstation 2 you know is much further down that list so what's interesting here is obviously that the switch is about to set some records splatoon 3 is likely going to sell over 10 million Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl is likely going to sell over 10 million. Pokemon Legends Arceus has a chance to do that. Breath of the Wild 2 has a chance to do that. That's four more tiles. That gets us to 15. And if you just throw in like a new Mario, a new Mario Kart, this Mario Party game that just came out, Superstars, you know, the last one did 15 million. If that crosses 10, you also have to consider things like Monster Hunter Rise. It's entirely possible that the Nintendo Switch ends up with more 10 plus million sellers than the Nintendo DS and Wii combined. Think about that for a moment. Just keep that in the back of your mind when you consider how successful Nintendo Switch is. So this is really impressive uh, for a system that hasn't even moved 100 million units yet. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Uh, but you can see why Nintendo wants to keep this generation going. It's literally the best generation they've ever had in terms of mega sellers. Now, they have had systems like the Wii sell 900 million pieces of software. Obviously, we don't know how many of those were, you know, at the $60 price point, but Nintendo clearly wants to keep this train going for as long as they can, and they should. So we'll see what happens, but uh, Nintendo is sitting very pretty. So next up, Shin Megami Tensei 5 is the next major game coming to Nintendo Switch. It releases, I think, next week on the 12th. That's really cool. Well, reviews came out yesterday, and holy crap, it's the highest rated Shin Megami Tensei game of all time. Previously, there were a couple of games that hit 84 on Metacritic, and some of them might go, but Nate, I see this Shin Megami Tensei 5 on Metacritic, or Shin Megami Tensei game that's listed as an 89. Ah, but read the subtitle for it. That is actually a Persona game. For those who don't know, Shin Megami Tensei predates Persona, and Persona spun off from Shin Megami Tensei. 
in a way. I don't know the exact details on all this. I'm not I'm not an expert on Persona and Shin Megami Tensei, so don't quote me exactly on that. But from what I know, that, 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 that that's sort of what happened. And so that game is technically a Persona game before Persona stopped using Shin Megami Tensei as like, you know, a, a, a pretext to it. So yeah, for when it comes to just Shin Megami Tensei games, this is the highest rated one ever. Uh, reviews are basically calling this game almost perfect for what it is. Um, although, be a bit careful about IGN. They decided to go with a little hyperbole this time around. Um, or hyperbole? I don't, I don't know. However you pronounce it. They decided to say something really weird. Calling this basically a poor man's Persona game. Yet they gave it an 8 out of 10. So, a poor man's Persona game... Feels really weird to hear that said when Shin Megami Tensei predates Persona. Kind of feel like the author of that review had something out against the fact that this is only on Switch. And that, you know, maybe because we don't have a full Persona game on Switch, a normal one. It is what it is. Uh, this is really great news. I'm about to see what sales do. Uh, you know, it, it is a niche genre, but hey, you never know. You never know. Does this hit 5 million, 6 million? Heck, maybe this becomes a fabled 10 million seller out of nowhere. Who knows? But uh, it should be interesting. And I actually am thinking about checking it out. I've never played a Persona game and I've never played a sh an SMT game. So this might be a good time to dive in. Maybe. I don't know. I'll have to wait and see what some other people I know who are going to try it out for the first time say. Because obviously longtime fans are going to glow about it. But I kind of want to know what someone who's never played before thinks. And there's a few people out there I know planning to review it. Uh, when it comes out that haven't played it before so I'm, I'm gonna kind of wait and see but I am interested and it possibly might be something I pick up later this month next up Super Mario 3d all-stars actually got an update 1.1.1 out of nowhere and this update shows that Nintendo has been listening to fan feedback this update enables the n64 controller to now be used with Super Mario 3d all-stars so now you can play Mario 64 in Super Mario 3d all-stars the same way that you can actually do it on the Nintendo switch online service they didn't need to add this update in but it is nice that they did and that does show hey sometimes nintendo does care when fans are like hey why can't we use it here it's possible by the way this was always planned and they needed more work but i also feel like if it was always planned they would have added support at launch but hey you know what it's there it's a good thing so hey cool more support for that n64 controller so darksiders 4 has potentially been confirmed now all of the all three darksiders games are on nintendo switch at this time thq nordic does like supporting nintendo switch and one of the former uh you know concept artists for darksiders at thq uh now works at thq nordic and released a new piece of art on their art station account now this art does show that it is copyrighted by thq nordic so they do own this piece of art so this makes it an official art uh but we aren't sure exactly what it's for but the character has a shocking resemblance uh to i think it's lilith uh yeah lilith uh from uh the mother of net film i i i again I'm, I'm butchering these these uh enunciations but lilith is uh yeah, this, it does look a lot like Lilo, to be honest. So uh, this is making people feel like Darksiders 4 is coming. THQ Nordic has not announced Darksiders 4, but they do own the IP. And it wouldn't be shocking to see it come out. Darksiders has actually quietly been a little bit of a, of a success of late uh, with some of these re-releases. So I do think uh, they might be investing in a fourth one whenever it does come out. So we'll have to wait and see. But uh, yeah, this potentially hints towards that. Next up, Netflix uh, UK and Ireland, they're, they're the same Netflix uh, territory. They have announced that the Sonic movie, that's right, the most recent one, and Detective Pikachu uh, are both going to be coming to Netflix. Well, at least in that area. Obviously, we don't know when it's going to come to the rest of the world, but the fact it's on Netflix there suggests we're probably going to see these movies elsewhere uh, whenever they fit into Netflix's lineup. So that's really good news. If you haven't seen them and you happen to be subscribed to Netflix in that territory, enjoy. They're excellent movies. Uh, I, I would say they're really, really good movies, but like phenomenal video game based movies because we don't get a lot of really good video game movies. These ones are that. I won't say they're like, they're, they're like some masterpiece of cinema but but they are very very good so 
enjoy if you haven't somehow seen them yet because um, I, I really enjoy those movies or maybe you just want to watch them again that happens to be on something you're already subscribed to last up we have our final story uh, of today at least or at least of right now who knows if more big, big news happens we might have to make a, a, another video um, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate cut a feature a feature we didn't know was going to be there uh, but now we know because Sakurai put this in the latest mm. Famitsu column he says in fact the original plan for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate there was some consideration for adding smash attacks in the air it was too complicated so it didn't get added i think aerial combat is important but the options for aerial attacks are quite limited the more skilled the player is it seems the more they use aerial attacks i decided against it because it felt like super smash bros ultimate was able to keep the balance between casual and hardcore players sora's concept you know sora from Kingdom Hearts, uh, was to make aerial fighting fun even for casual players. So, again, this is something he, he could have added in there, but he felt like skilled players would take too much, too big of an advantage uh, of it compared to casual players, and thus it could make the experience not as fun. Obviously, really skilled players end up destroying casual players anyway, so I'm not really sure what Sakurai's worried about there. Uh, but still, I you know, maybe it's a competitive balance thing, and maybe, you know, it was it seems like it was scrapped pretty early on, but it was an idea they had. I uh, would have been cool to maybe see them attempt to implement it, but it is what it is. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is already pretty amazing just the way it is. And I think most people agree. It is now technically uh, ahead of Breath of the Wild in sales. Just barely, but it is ahead of Breath of the Wild in sales now, uh, despite coming out a year later, or a year and a half later. So that's really great. Anyways, folks, I'm Nathaniel RoboJets from the Nintendo Prime. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Drop the like, hit that comment section up, share it around. You guys are amazing. I love every single one of you, and I will catch you in the next video. By the way, we do have a live stream tonight at 8 p.m. It's already set up. I'll put a link down below. Go set your notifications. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight obviously by the way this live stream is more tailored towards adults we'll have some drinks and have a lot of fun all right guys catch you in the next video